the golden proportion, the divine formula that rules fine art. Great art starts with a great drawing. All great drawings are based on golden proportions. The golden proportion, also known as golden section, divine proportion, golden mean, or golden ratio, is a universal principle that is present in nature, science, and art. The Greek symbol phi is used for the golden proportion. The golden proportion is mathematically determined by nature and used by fine artists, sculptors, and architects as a guideline for beauty and harmony. It's time to examine the golden proportion to understand how it works. Let's compare two ratios as described by a famous Greek mathematician, Euclid of Alexandria, about 2300 years ago. In his book Elements, Euclid drew a line and divided it into a ratio that was named by him as extreme and mean ratio. The line A is divided into two parts, B and C, so that the ratio of the line A to the larger part B is the same as the part B to the smaller part C. This golden mean phi can be calculated as the sum 1 added to the square root of 5 divided by 2, and equals approximately 1.61803 to 1. Using Euclid's proportions, we can draw a pentagram in which the ratios of lines A is to B as B is to C, and B is to C as C is to D. All pentagram segments, in order of decreasing lengths, are in ratio of phi, that is 1.816. Nature uses the same principles of construction. Let's cut an apple to check the pentagram sections in the center. This shape is a five-pointed star, and is also called the pentad. For centuries, it was regarded as the symbol of power. The first written description of this symbol can be found in the book by Luca Pacioli, Leonardo da Vinci's teacher, who revealed the method of the pentad construction and its unique geometrical properties to the world. The pentad geometry can also be found in seeds, leaves, flowers, starfish, and many other plants and living creatures. Divine proportions can be found in nature in the form of spirals. Equiangular spiral, also known as spira mirabilis, is a logarithmic spiral. The distances between the arms of this spiral increase in geometric progression. It can be geometrically constructed using golden triangles or golden rectangles. Here's the method of the triangles. The golden triangle is taken from the pentad. This triangle is duplicated and scaled to fit a previous triangle. A spiral curve goes around the triangle's corners. The method of the golden rectangle starts with a square and continues with additional squares that correspond to the golden ratio. A spiral goes from a corner to the opposite corner of each square. There are endless examples of golden spirals in nature. Its geometry even explains why the eye of the storm is calm, while the hurricane can reach as much as 100 miles per hour in wind speed. The golden spiral's eye is called a symptote. This is the place that the spiral is approaching, but never reaches. Therefore, the wind forces are in balance in the eye of the storm. The golden proportion spiral works on a cosmic scale as well. Spiral galaxies are formed around a center of gravity, but they follow the same divine rules. Numerous spirals can be found in our bodies. Examples of these spiral shapes include the human ear, our fists, the human embryo, and the structure of our DNA. The human body and facial proportions follow the divine formula. To illustrate golden proportions in a human face, let's create the golden mask. As the base, we will take the pentad that consists of golden triangles. On top of one pentad, we will place another one, which is rotated 180 degrees, upside down. Now we connect all 10 outer points with blue lines. This grid is used for the face mask construction. Note how red lines follow green and blue lines. The mask is complete. 
Now let's put it into practice. The harmony of the golden proportion is present in the human body. Leonardo da Vinci's famous drawing, Vitruvian Man, dating back to 1509, depicts a man in two superimposed positions, with his arms and legs inscribed in a square and circle. The circle is centered on his center of gravity, navel, and a square is centered on the root of his penis. The man's knees, the root of the penis, and the middle of the chest divide the figure into four equal parts. This drawing is named in honor of Marcus Vitruvius Pollio, a Roman architect, writer, and engineer, who wrote about 2,040 years ago. The length of the outspread arm is equal to the height of a man. For the human body is so designed by nature that the face, from the chin to the top of the forehead and the lowest roots of the hair, is a tenth part of the whole height. The open hand from the wrist to the tip of the middle finger is just the same. The head from the chin to the crown an eighth. From above the chest to the hairline is one-seventh of the height of a man. And with the neck and shoulder from the top of the breast to the lowest roots of the hair is a sixth. From the middle of the breast to the summit of the crown is a fourth. The maximum width of the shoulders is a quarter of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the tip of the hand is a quarter of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the armpit is one-eighth of the height of a man. The root of the penis is at half the height of a man. The foot is one-seventh of the height of a man. The distance from below the chin to the nose and the eyebrows and the hairline are equal to the ears and to one-third of the face. The proportions of the human body correlate with the divine ratio phi. The golden proportion can be found in the ratio of the distance between the fingertip and the elbow to the distance between the wrist and the elbow. The ratio of the distance between the navel and the end of the foot to the distance between the navel and the knee. The ratio of the distance between the navel and the top of the head to the distance between the navel and the shoulder line. The ratio of the distance between the navel and the top of the head to the distance between the top of the head and the middle of the breast. For centuries, the golden proportions of a human body have fascinated fine artists. Albrecht Dürer, a German painter, graphic artist, and humanist, wrote, illustrated, and edited the book on human body proportions. This book was designed to apply the science of human anatomical proportions to aesthetics. The same divine proportions can be found in Albrecht Dürer's illustrations. Here is the solution to a practical question how to divide a line according to the golden proportion. To divide any line at the point of the golden ratio, first find the middle of that line. You can use a ruler or a drawing compass. Draw a perpendicular line, BC, which equals one half of the first line. Join the endpoints of two lines, A and C, making the right angle triangle. Draw an arc with the radius CB, it cuts the longest side of the triangle in the point D. Draw another arc with the center A and radius AD. The point E where this arc intersects the line divides the line into its golden ratio. This task can be done much faster without any geometrical drawings by simply using the golden gauge tool, which will help you greatly when making drawings and compositions using divine proportions. Have a look at how the golden proportion gauge is constructed. There are five parts in total. The shape and thickness of every part isn't so important, provided that the locations of the axes and the proportions of the distances between them, as well as the distances to the gauge tips, are accurate. It is ready to be used for great art, and the great art starts with a great drawing. Michelangelo's Golden Proportions In this video, on examples of Michelangelo's artworks, you will discover how golden proportions are used in fine art. 
the Golden Proportion Gauge is a great tool to find divine proportions quickly. Choose any painting or sculpture by any great old master, and without any doubt, the artwork will contain golden ratios. Just look at how many various golden proportions can be found in well-known works by Michelangelo. Michelangelo was one of the greatest artists of the Renaissance. A sculptor, painter, and architect, he was outstanding in every field. No artist before or since has produced such a legacy of masterpieces. Here's a fragment of the Sistine ceiling fresco, Creation of Adam. Michelangelo is using an innovative composition that is very dynamic. God the Father is almost touching Adam's finger, while surrounded by other figures. Never before was the creation of Adam depicted in such a way. It is quite controversial, as neither the biblical texts nor church conventions describe the action in the way depicted by the artist. Here's the portrait from the part of the ceiling named Creation of the World and Medallions with the History of the Maccabinus. The following portraits and figures are from the over-life-sized seating figures of Sibylus and Prophets. Michelangelo infused his Prophets and Sibylus with considerably more dynamism than any artist before him had ever done. They're holding books and scrolls, and the names are written beneath each figure. This is the Medici Burial Chapel in the new sacristy of St. Lorenzo. The sculpture of Pieta was done in 1498 and 99. Michelangelo was only 23 at the time. I've seen this marble in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican several times, and every time I was astonished by the mastery of the Divine Master. The sculpture of David is more than five meters high. It was completed by Michelangelo in 1504. It has been a symbol of ideal physical beauty ever since. This part of the Sistine ceiling fresco tells the biblical story of the creation and fall of mankind. Here you see Adam and Eve taking the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge. On the right, the serpent is depicted with a human head and anthropomorphic body. This composition is full of golden proportions. It seems that no matter which measurements you take, they will all follow the divine ratio.
This fresco shows the creation of Eve from the rib of the sleeping Adam. As an architect, Michelangelo adhered to the golden proportions in every project he undertook. Here's the model of the facade of St. Lorenzo. Michelangelo left his mark in Rome's architecture as well. Here's the view of the southern tribune of St. Peter's Basilica. Note how carefully calculated the window's proportions are. Michelangelo redesigned the dome of St. Peter's Basilica in 1547. His design shows the significance of golden proportions. Great art starts with a great drawing, and great drawing is based on the golden ratio. If you want to get a far better deal than at any contemporary art college, you're in the right place. At Life Drawing Academy, you'll learn the same academic drawing techniques as taught in the best art academies of Moscow and St. Petersburg. Such systems of classical drawing was preserved for hundreds of years in Russia and Life Drawing Academy is the only place where you can learn it in the comfort of your own home under personal guidance of Academy tutors. There are two art courses available for you, the online course and the correspondence course. The online course is a self-paced, self-study course where you can learn life drawing techniques by watching video lessons and doing proposed assignments. In the correspondence course, in addition to video lessons, you'll also get personal one-to-one -one tutoring from the academy teachers, which will be custom tailored to your level of skills and needs. So don't miss your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and enroll now.